Okay, everyone. Thanks very much for waiting. Um, I'm going to uh, start the conference now. So welcome to the Oracle Argus Safety and Argus Safety Japan web session presented today by Rodley, Rodney Lemery and uh, Paul Dobrovolsky. Uh, my name is Adrian Hampshire, and I'm Managing Director of the European, Middle East, and Africa region of Biofarm Systems. And I need to go over to over just some uh, short, short housekeeping items with you today before we start. So during the presentation, all the, pres all the uh, participants will be in listen-only mode. Uh, however, uh, you may submit questions to the speaker at any time uh, during the session by typing them into the chat feature, which is located on the bottom left corner of the ReadyTalk screen. Um, other web participants, uh, webinar participants will not be seeing your uh, questions or the comments. Um, and if we have time towards the end of the session, uh, we'll address um, any of the questions that have actually been uh, provided through the chat forum. Um, if you still have unanswered questions at the end of the web, or would simply want to request more information from Biofarm, then uh, we'd uh, recommend that you fill in, visit our website or fill in the survey at the end of the, uh, of the web session today. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, today's call is being recorded and we'll post it up onto the Biofarm website within 48 hours and we will mail all the attendees the link to the recording. Uh, so if you lose uh, either the connection to the uh, ReadyTalk conference or the, web or the audio portion, um, you can download the session afterwards from our website. So that's the, that concludes the housekeeping meeting, uh, parts of the meeting. So let's start with the session proper. Good morning. Okay, so um, we just introduced the agenda. Um, so we're going to have two sessions today. The first of them is going to be done by uh, Rodney Lemery, who's the Senior uh, Practice D Director of our Safety Management Practice in Biofarm Systems. And Rodney's going to be talking about working with Argus as a safety uh, management system in a global environment. Uh, and we'll follow that up with a specific uh, look at Argus Safety Japan, an overview from Paul Dobrovolsky. Paul is a senior sales consultant for Oracle Health Sciences and Business Unit. Um, and Paul will give some specifics around uh, Argus Safety to reinforce how Argus provides with a unified approach to dealing with safety in a global environment. And then, as I say, if we have time after that, uh, we'll move some questions and answer and answer some of your uh, chat questions if we can. So let me turn over first to uh, Rodney Lemery, Senior Practice Director of Bar Safety Management of Biofarm Systems, uh, to talk about uh, Argus in a global uh, community environment. Rodney. Good morning, uh, afternoon, or early evening, depending on where you are. Uh, so what I would like to discuss are just the uh, general key features of the Argus system. This is the base Argus product that uh, really facilitate a, a globalization of your company in the world of, of safety management. So I'll first uh, go over some high-level Argus features that, again, are basic for any implementation, and then I'll cover some specific key features that are uh, very helpful for a global company's perspective. So the first is that Argus, by default, um, supports all types of products. This would include drugs, devices, vaccines, biologics, or any other combination therapies that you can think of. It's a highly uh, semi-configurable system in that your business needs that might be specific to a globalization are, are all encompassed right within the, the Argus environment itself. Uh, you do not require, many companies at least, would not require customizations to the system in order to globalize their, their company in the safety management space. And almost all of the configurations can be performed right within a graphical user interface, making this type of administration and configuration very uh, 
easy to perform for any given company. The workflow engine that comes with the Argus system is also incredibly flexible and uh, allows us to create very process-specific uh, workflow environments to accommodate uh, today's global environment. It is uh, completely compliant with both the electronic signature and electronic records components of 21 CFR Part 11 within the United States uh, for the FDA. Um, it has a wonderful integrated query module that allows us to do very simple and very complex types of analysis and surveillance right from the Argus safety system without having any additional uh, analysis or reporting tools associated to the system. This again makes it a very flexible uh, system with respect to global tracking and analysis of our safety data. And of course the uh, ability to track all of our reports and submissions both within the uh, U.S. and internationally when it comes to expedited and periodic reporting. The system has a phenomenal ability to track all of that data. Um, the key piece here for globalization would be the tracking of your periodic reports right from a single screen. It makes Argus a, a very uh, approachable software for this type of work. It has a, a rudimentary document management system in that you may attach any type of document to your case data, and it has out of the box the capability to interface with a more complex document management system such as Documentum. It has internal to its system the ability to integrate to the Medra and Who Drug dictionaries for all of your dictionary management needs. Uh, and this is also a key important piece of the safety puzzle when talking about safety management in a global environment. Obviously we use these types of safety systems because of the changing face of product safety in the world. Um, now we are entering a new age of uh, product safety where as companies tracking the safety data, we are becoming more and more uh, expected by the regulatory authorities to actually focus on pharmacovigilance and uh, safety surveillance in ways that per perhaps were not traditional in uh, past product safety environments. Some of the challenges that we face in a global environment are getting cases case data from our global partners into, let's say, a central model. Um, how do we facilitate the reviewing or processing of these cases at the center? And how do we distribute back to our partners any type of requirements for local labeling assessment or even in the case of Germany or France, um, specific scientific case review? Uh, also, we obviously need to track and generate all of the individual case safety reports that are required for the various global reporting authorities. How then does Argus help? There are basically two models that we've seen companies utilize. The first model would be partners or uh, affiliates having direct access to the central repository uh, via a corporate network. And the second model would be the implementation of an additional piece of software called the Argus Local Affiliate Module, which would allow for the case entry, local labeling, and reporting into a centralized uh, repository. So the centralized database would be kept synchronized to all of the local affiliate modules. Either of these methods could support a fast and effective distribution of cases. Um, between global partners, affiliates, and the central uh, responsible authority. So some of the main components of Argus include case processing areas, work list areas, which are I like to call our to-do lists. We have the local affiliate area, and also the, the Argus console, which is where we can 
obtain all of our global configuration for globalization. And just as a note, the case is the basic unit of uh, entry in the Argus system, and that we would use as defined by the ICH. So let's look at our globalized case processing in the first model, which uh, we, can, we can see would have certain case data that could be entered in to our affiliate area in the local language. For example, the case narrative, uh, event terms, etc. Um, these cases could be placed into work lists or what I like to call to-do lists and assigned to the various global groups um, to keep all the case processing well organized. Um, for example, notification of local labeling or reporting needs. We then look at our central repository of global reporting rules, and that central repository and configuration would allow us to track all of the individual case safety reports being submitted to various agencies. Again, Argus has a fantastic capability of tracking all of the periodic reports maintained in a central screen, and this allows for very clear tracking and compliance auditing with your periodic update reports. As an example of local language, our narratives, in, and this is just a single example of multiple fields that have this type of, of multilingual capability, we could have an English narrative entered in, and then the, in this example, Spanish equivalent of that narrative placed into the Spanish equivalent field. This means then that the Spanish equivalent data could appear on uh, Spanish-specific individual case safety reports. Our work lists or to-do lists are all available to us, and they come in different forms. So new, open, action items, contacts, reports, they all spe specifically show us cases that have something that we need to work on for that day or that month or that period of time. Many times in that work list, there are some submenus that facilitate the processing of that case data without us actually having to open up the case into case entry and conduct the, the activity that we are trying to do. So for example, if we go to work list action items, we will see all of the cases that have an action item associated to our user account or the group to which we belong. We can then right from the work list screen, close out an action item once the action item is completed. So this type of common feature in the work list really does uh, facilitate uh, the activities associated to case processing without um, having to open up the case into case entry mode. In a, in a second model, which is the LAM or local affiliate module uh, methodology, we could have a subset of cases that are entered into all of the av available LAM applications, even in local language if it was required. Um, then our cases are transferred on a routine basis into the central repository where the review and uh, approval and global partners are then notified once the local labeling and reporting is required by any of the local affiliate modules, we will then utilize aspects of the system to notify those LAMs that further case processing is required, again, either reporting or local labeling. Um, all of the local work for the case processing would actually occur within the local affiliate module. The central repository would contain all of our global regulatory report rules, just as it did in, module, in Model 1, and that would again track all of the individual case safety reporting rules for our global environment. Again, the periodic reports are maintained in the central screen just like they are in Model 1. Again, this is a screenshot of the local affiliate module, which allows you to enter as an affiliate all of the uh, 
pertinent case data that are needed to facilitate the execution of an individual case safety report. And this data is, again, transmitted back to the central database. Once the central database uh, notifies the local affiliate that some type of local labeling is required, then there is an, uh, a local labeling screen within the LAM module that facilitates the local labeling right in the single screen activity. So again, this kind of assists us in uh, facilitating the globalization of our, of our computer system. We also have the ability to generate local language reports as well. I gave the example of a, a Spanish report before. Um, we have some French reports and German reports that are available out of the box in the Argus safety system as well. And Paul will be covering the, the Japanese equivalents. So again, in general, um, I'm hoping that these slides have demonstrated some basic features of the Argus safety system that really do aid in globalizing your company, um, making it a very user-friendly application and one that, that is quite robust in meeting all of your individual case safety reporting needs and also your periodic safety update uh, needs. So with that said, I think I can turn this presentation now over to Paul to discuss specifically the Japanese benefits of Argus safety. Thank you, Rodney. And just before Paul starts, um, let me remind everybody on the call that if you want to ask any questions, please just type them into the chat box uh, and we'll respond to them uh, when we, at the end of the presentation if we have sufficient time. So Paul, over to you. Thanks, Adrian. Uh, thanks, Rodney, as well. Um, so what we wanted to, uh, to give you as well as uh, an overview uh, with the global process is obviously uh, a lot of companies talk about global process and oftentimes exclude Japan or don't know exactly what to do with Japan. And we wanted to make sure that uh, part of those global process, we wanted to give you a, a look at uh, the, the fact that with Argus Safety you can truly have a global process and, and try to harmonize your, your business process and, and, uh, and your tasks uh, globally. Uh, and how do we do this? What, uh, what is, uh, what is uh, more appropriate if you want? What, why Argus Japan? Um, and, and before I start with, with uh, the benefits, I just wanted to mention that you know, Argus J or Argus Japan, as a lot of people are, are hearing about it, uh, one thing that you need to, to understand is that this is not a separate product. This is not a separate application that we simply integrate with the Argus suite of product. This is a fully, fully part of the Argus, suite, uh, Argus safety suite. It is just an addition uh, of functionality that allows us to really harmonize the benefit of having a global system and um, really allows you to, uh, to, to be uh, more in compliance with what is happening around your company. Um, so one of the, the, the biggest benefits of, uh, of Argus Safety is obviously to have uh, this portion that is Argus Safety uh, Japan. Um, so again, this is a, a single global database. So at the architecture level, um, it is the same database, the same database where the English case uh, are stored. In fact, the English case and the Japanese case are actually a single case with the information uh, separated into the appropriate uh, section of the case form. What does, uh, what does it mean for us? It means that it is also a single application, which means that when you actually have Argus Safety in-house, um, if you need the operation in Japan and you want to use the same system, then all you need to do is at the licensing uh, aspect, you need to license the fact that you're going to also use Argus Japan. But it also means that if you are a Japanese company 
in operation in Japan only or are looking into uh, starting with Japan and then expanding into uh, the rest of the world, it also means that you can start with Argus Safety Japan uh, and uh, establish your, your business process and then uh, slowly expand in the countries that you want because it is a single application, a single global database. What's, what are the benefits of having a single, a, a single database? Well, obviously, uh, one of the biggest benefits is that you deal with only one case, that it is in English or that it is in Japanese. Um, you all get the same information. Um, this also reduces overhead. Uh, and by that we mean, uh, you know, anything that has to do with multiple system. So uh, it could be uh, the, the double data entry, the data entry into a, a global system and a Japanese system only. Uh, it could uh, mean also uh, a reduction in, in uh, duplication of uh, or, or of case assessment because now you need to uh, to uh, assess the case in Japan as well as in the rest of the world. You may have a business process that, uh, that uh, establish a link via E to B uh, between the two systems. Uh, again, this can uh, be eliminated. Uh, the maintenance cost of having multiple servers and multiple systems, the validation cost for uh, maintaining and upgrading multiple systems. And obviously, um, business process. Uh, if you have multiple business process, you want to try to harmonize these process into, into a, globalized, uh, a globalized way of, of uh, capturing and, and storing your data, um, as well as uh, measuring compliance. Uh, with having a single system, you can now uh, have a true picture of your compliance around the globe and uh, produce the right metrics and uh, et cetera, et cetera. We're also looking at uh, um, uh, signaling. And with having a single database, a single source of truth, you can also start performing more intelligent uh, signal detection and a globalized uh, view of your product and your portfolio and uh, evaluate risk benefits of, of, of your product at a global level instead of segregating this by, by different country. Uh, in order to, to uh, put these in place, we, uh, we obviously uh, needed to make sure that the application is compliant with uh, the different requirements, which are uh, driven by uh, not only uh, Europe and, and the US, but also uh, by the MHLW and the, PM, and the PMDA. So we took those into, uh, into consideration and uh, we build uh, within the, uh, the Argus J, the compliance, uh, to make sure that we, uh, we fully uh, respect the, the reporting requirements. Uh, this also allows you to do a query uh, on both the Japanese and the English data. And um, having a single database also allows you to uh, always have access to the source document if you were to uh, to use Argus to uh, to store your your source documents. Some of the other aspects uh, of of uh, having j the Japanese uh, enabled within the application is obviously uh, translation needs, and uh, we'll see a couple of screenshots. Um, the translation aspect in Argus Safety has been, uh, has been taken care of. Uh, any piece of uh, information within the case form uh, at any time, uh, you can have a split screen, split screen um, that allows you to, uh, to look at the information in both Japanese and English and allows you to make uh, the appropriate uh, translation. The functionality that uh, Rodney also mentioned, the multilingual, uh, capability uh, that is available for text fields with, within the application has also been uh, additionally enhanced to, uh, to allow you to capture the Japanese aspect um, of, of this uh, particular information, as well as uh, auto-encoding. 
So when uh, when a, a case is entered and, and uh, uh, you encode an event via Medra, because Medra J is also supported, there is a simultaneous translation. And for uh, things that don't exactly match, it allows the Japanese users as well to select a more appropriate term if they needed to do so. We also support the uh, the the J terms and um, the who drug um, functionality. So again, there for for the product coding, uh, you'll be able to do that. And because it is a single system. Um, the, uh, the maintenance and the administration of the system is maintained by the same web interface that Rodney uh, talked a, l a little bit about. And uh, you have the specific um, J items that you can, uh, you can have control over. And you also have some, some translation tables so that uh, your products and, and, and your licenses are uh, translated in, in kanji as well, so that you can make sure that uh, this matches the, the English and that uh, you don't have to redo everything uh, by, and you don't have to maintain this outside of the application. So give you an example of uh, the translation screen. Uh, when, when you're an Argus uh, user and you have the J uh, available, then you will have um, this, this little uh, uh, flag opportunity that shows you the Japanese and the English. And that allows you to, uh, to have uh, a split screen with the information. And that, that can be uh, a vertical or horizontal uh, way of representing the information. And uh, one nice uh, feature is that even though you may be uh, a Japanese user and you're entering the case, you may have to do the translation English to Japanese or Japanese to English. And uh, basically, uh, the functionality is there to unlock the, uh, the portion of the case form that you want to edit in the language that you want to edit so that if it's a Japanese case that is being entered and you're entering your narrative and now um, you need to enter the English narrative so that uh, the rest of the company uh, has uh, a good narrative to start with, um, you can unlock that specific portion of the case form in the English version and enter the narrative in English uh, as well as in Japanese, and therefore the rest of the company will have the narrative in English. In the same manner, uh, when you go to the uh, note fields, um, this is the same uh, little screen that uh, Rodney was showing, the multilingual uh, screen that allows you to uh, capture the French, the, uh, the Spanish, and, and the other language. And this has also been enhanced with uh, the capability to, for all of these note fields to be able to capture Jap Jap Japanese-specific uh, text. So that, again, uh, you can document as much as possible the, 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 single, uh, the single case and have all the information required on that single case, no matter where you are in the world. On the uh, uh, coding aspect, uh, uh, Argus allows you to, uh, to code, uh, obviously, in English and in Japanese, and then shows you the relation between, between the terms um, so that you can make sure that if, um, for uh, a particular reason, you would have um, a term that is non-current, uh, that would uh, the dictionary uh, will highlight that term as not being current, and will give you the uh, the possibility to select a, either an, a different LLT or a different PT, depending on on uh, your business process and what is the uh, coding uh, naming convention that you want to use. <coughs> Again, in the same aspect. Uh, we talked about uh, the support for uh, J terms as well as the Who Drug Dictionary. Uh, so the application again allows you now to uh, to browse the uh, the different uh, dictionary and allows you to select uh, uh, the more appropriate uh, concomitant drugs or 
uh, possibly different suspect uh, suspect drug that you may have. Now that's that's as far as that is concerned. Obviously, one big uh, concern that we had was uh, how do we meet certain specific requirements for Japan. One of which is the fact that the uh, the report the reporting uh, timeline starts when Japan becomes aware of of the case. So it may be a little different than. Uh, for a global case, it may be a little different than, than the initial receipt date that, that is used by, by the rest of the world. So we've, uh, we've taken those type of requirements into consideration and we've added those to, uh, to the application for, for that particular purpose. So you'll see, um, you'll see a, a PMDA tab uh, available in the analysis tab now that allows you to, uh, to tackle the different requirement that is specific for Japan, uh, namely the, uh, the difference in, in receipt date, um, some of the narratives specific to, uh, to the license that are being used. So uh, in Japan, there is, there is a requirement for uh, being able to provide different narratives for each of the products that are there and then rearranging uh, these products as well when, when the reports are being produced. So those particular requirements have also been tackled, and this is again uh, all the benefits that you can uh, that you can get with a single application, a single database that allows you to uh, to take care of those particular requirements. And when it comes to the E2B, uh, the Japanese uh, requirements are a little more complex than than uh, what we have in, in Europe and, and, uh, and in, uh, in the US. And uh, we needed to make sure that those particular uh, requirements were also handled uh, properly and that the different uh, files that, uh, that are required for E2B transmission were created properly. So the, the I format and the J format of, of, uh, of the forms are being created and packaged um, and, and this is something that, uh, that uh, was mandatory and that uh, the engineering department has done a very well, good job with. Um, if you do support, uh, if you do submit um, paper copy to the uh, PMDA or the MHLW, then we also have those forms available. So uh, additionally to, uh, to the, the forms that Rodney showed in his slides, uh, with uh, the number of forms that are available in Argus Safety, uh, the Japanese forms uh, will also be part of that, uh, uh, that selection when, when that uh, section of the application is uh, enabled. <clears throat> so a couple of uh, last slides um, that uh, we wanted to show you where uh, some of these requirements, so this is uh, showing you how the application now capture the Japanese specific requirement like the, the, the uh, receipt date for, for, for Japan, like the, um, uh, the licensing uh, and the potentially the, uh, uh, the report type that are, that are required for, for Japan. So this is in the, uh, within the case form. Uh, again, um, so within the same case form as, as the regular Argus Safety, uh, however, it, um, uh, it allows the Japanese user to have access to that and uh, uh, provide the, uh, the uh, available information. And um, the, uh, the one, uh, one more within that same tab, we have uh, the specific with the, uh, the narrative uh, portion and the comment per license that the J item requires. Um, and this is again part of the application available to, uh, to be there and documented at any given time uh, within the case processing. So Argus J then allows you to, uh, to harmonize your global business process and allows you to hopefully tackle some of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the challenges that we've seen in the industry uh, that, that tell us, okay, uh, how do we handle the fact that there are two systems uh, currently that many of you may be, may be using. 
Um, so we try to really regroup all of this, again, within the same database, within the same application, and allow you to, uh, to tackle these uh, challenges and, and business process within, uh, within Argus Safety. And this is part of the Argus Safety Suite. So hopefully this gives you a, a, a nice overview of Argus J. And I guess uh, at this point um, we have time for some uh, question and answers. Thank you, Paul. Yes, we have a number of questions. In. Um, let's deal with uh, as many of them as we can. Do. Um, I'll read out the questions and then Paul, you or um, or uh, me, if you could tackle the uh, answer questions for me. So the first one is: um, I'm not sure I fully understand the two components. Would Argus J users enter a case directly into Argus Safety for the rest of the company? Um, Paul, could you try that one? Um, so, so with with Argus being a single application, uh, yes. If if the case was then received originally by uh, an Argus J or, or a Japanese user, then uh, the the Japanese user could do the data entry uh, for uh, for the company. Uh, enter the information uh, respectively to uh, to what they're getting, attach the source document, do the translation where required uh, for the English portion, and then pass this over to uh, to the uh, to the global process for uh, for the the English portion of the case. Once the uh, the appropriate users uh, open the case in the English format then the application uh, automatically translates everything that can be translated with the code list, like the, um, uh, the uh, products, the licenses, uh, obviously the narrative being there already, then uh, it, would, it would take care of that. Okay, so a follow-on from that is, um, do we have uh, interna international global pharma companies that are currently using both Argus Safety and Argus J together? So the, uh, the short answer is yes. The long answer is that um, uh, uh, some of these companies are currently in uh, the deployment stage. So. Um, I don't uh, recall, and maybe um, I'll, I can uh, verify the, the answer, but I don't recall that any of them are currently live with, uh, with both systems uh, or with, with uh, both portion of the, the application active. Uh, we have some that are uh, planned for the end of the year. Uh, that will be the, the, the first one. Uh, however, a lot of people are looking into into this process and putting things into places. Most of the global companies have started with the um, the English portion and deployed this globally and are tackling the Japanese aspect as a phase two of the project. So they are currently a lot of them are currently um, well a lot of them uh, I know of, uh, of five companies global companies that are in the process of implementing the, the J portion. Okay, let's move on to a, a, another topic. Um, the question here is, what is the best way to hand over a case to another country affiliate after the case has been processed uh, by a US-based central function? Uh, Rodney, do you want to try that one? Sure. Uh, so it would depend on whether or not you have implemented the LAM or you're using a global repository. And I'm sure Paul can step in if, if he would like to add anything. But if in a globalized environment where you have a central repository, we have done things in the past where uh, post case, case save triggers will uh, cause specific action items to appear in the case data 
that then are uh, specific to the various work lists that are available in the Argus system. So that if we, for example, needed a German colleague to open up the case and uh, perform the scientific assessment that is customary in Germany, then uh, the, act, the action items would show an activity that uh, mimicked that uh, requirement, and the next time the German colleague logged into Argus in a centralized model, they would see in their work list a uh, ac action item that required that case to be scientifically assessed. Um, for the LAM, if you invoke the the LAM affiliation, the local affiliated module function, then that becomes simply part of the LAM as the case is passed back to the LAM for local labeling or local require, uh, reporting requirement processing. So, so if I can add to that another question from another participant that seems to be uh, related, uh, and the question is, is there a clear mechanism to identify which site actually owns a given case? Yeah, actually, the, at the database level, we uh, we do uh, capture what is what is um, what is triggered by which uh, process. And to uh, to continue on what uh, Rodney has explained, um, when you de when you do uh, want to engage the the LAM or the affiliate uh, portion of of Argus Safety. Um, it, there are business process that you need to think about, and and this will then uh, maybe sometimes re-architect your global process and say, okay, now we have this functionality. How do we leverage this? So you can engage us or some of, some of our consultant or uh, some of our partners to to, to go back and, and re-look at at what you're doing and how to best deploy. Uh, these different uh, pieces of the application within a global environment. There is some architecture, there is some re-engineering, if you want, of your business process that needs to occur when you start thinking of deploying the affiliate and deploying the, uh, the Argus J module, because you are now in, uh, involving a lot more uh, people and therefore uh, more proce process as well. Okay, so uh, building on that a little bit further, I think it's related. Uh, a further question from another participant. Is it possible for a, a central function to pass a labeling assessment against the company's core data sheet or the investigator brochure to the local affiliate? So do we have an answer uh, to that I'll, one, or do you want to I'll I'll attempt to fill that in, and then you can you can chime in if you have anything to add. So the core the core data sheets would be uh, stored in the global repository. So you would be asked to assess those, but in the LAM, the local affiliate module, that would be for local labeling. So it would be toward more geared toward the country-specific label itself and not the core data sheet. Um, Paul, do the core data sheets appear in the LAM module as well? No. The, the, um the local labeling, the local labeling uh, screen will provide you the uh, the core assessment call, but but it won't show you the uh, the data sheet itself. That that is a function only within Argus Safety, but they will have uh, an idea of of the assessment made globally. So they will have a reference as well as their own. Local uh, local data sheet. Okay, so um, there are some there are various questions coming up now regarding the lo uh, the local affiliate model mod module rather. Um, so before we start on one of those, um, I've got a more general question relating to LAM and its relationship to Argus J. So how do, how does the local affiliate model and Argus J interact or interface? Uh, by which the uh, the questioner means if the if Argus J is used, does one not need a LAM and Anymore for Japan. Yeah, that's that's the uh, that's the uh, 
the the bottom line is we we try to to with uh, with RGJ to make sure that uh, the uh, the requirements are are uh, met and and fulfilled within the RGJ portion, and therefore when you have the RGJ portion enabled. Then uh, you would not deploy uh, an affiliate module to the Japan users because it is the full uh, the full Argus um, that is that is being deployed and not a limited version of uh, of the case form for the affiliate. And because coding is required and 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 other uh, other specific tasks, um, those tasks are not available in the affiliate, but only in Argus J. Hopefully, this answers the question. Okay. Uh, so here's a more specific question around uh, the local affiliate module, uh, and the question is: Does the local affiliate module module uh, allow users to upload cases through XML? Uh, and if so, uh, where could the questioner find a description of the feature? Um, I believe this is, uh, and and I will have to verify this. Currently, uh, the affiliate does the affiliate module does not allow you to uh, to upload anything um, uh, like E two B or XML files. However, um, if I recall correctly, this is being uh, evaluated for enhancement and should be coming. To the application and to the affiliate module uh, very very shortly. Um, so it is uh, it is a function that we've uh, we've uh, evaluated uh, very strongly and and uh, without without being able to tell you more, yes, it will uh, be available in a future uh, version of the affiliate module. Thank you, Paul. Um, the, so the follow-up question is that: Do we do we know which version that's likely to happen in, or not yet? Um, we we do, and we can uh, probably uh, get back to uh, the uh, the particular customer and and uh, and uh, provide them with uh, the the roadmap of of what's coming up. Okay, that's fine. So I have one last question, and this is on literature search. We're coming your way, Rodney. So uh, can literature searches be conducted using Argus Safety, or do you have to log out and use the PubMed uh, module for conducting a literature review? Okay, so um, again, Paul, chime in if you have any uh, other experiences to add as well. But in my experience, I, I wouldn't necessarily log out of Argus. Well, I would just keep my Argus session open. But yes, I would have to use some other type of searching mechanism, PubMed, uh, Google Scholar, whatever your company uses as the preferred methodology for your literature uh, searching. And then once those literature cases are discovered, then you can just pop right back into your Argus system and, and conduct the entry of the literature cases. Um, I didn't cover this, but there is a fantastic feature in Argus that really does help with specifically with the literature case entry portion of regulatory requirements that where we can enter one of the literature cases completely in totality. And then we can use the copy case function to duplicate that, let's say, for a piece of literature that had 400 participants experiencing the same SAE or AE event, and we didn't want to have to rekey in that 400 times. So depending on your internal, uh, your internal rules around what constitutes a case in a literature search, you could utilize the, the copy function to accommodate all of those various cases once one case is completely entered. Thank you. Anything you want to add to that, Paul? No, I think you guys, you guys have done a, a very good job at that. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that exhausts our list of questions for this afternoon. So uh, I'm just going to round out the, the presentation with a thank you for your participation 
Um, and I think, I, I think that today's presentation has shown that Oracle's Argus Safety and Argus Safety Japan is uh, somewhat unique in the marketplace in that it addresses successfully the need uh, to actually be able to operate in a global environment using a unified uh, solution. Um, and that said, um, Biofarm offers a number of services around implementation of Oracle's products. So if you're interested in these, uh, please either visit our website and request information uh, from that. Uh, or fill in the, uh, the survey that comes around after this uh, session. Uh, and finally, just as a reminder, um, do be aware that uh, the whole presentation recording will actually be available on the Biofarm website within the next 24 hours. So uh, finally, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, presentation uh, speakers, uh, Rodney and, uh, and Paul, uh, and thank you very much very much everybody else for your participation this afternoon. Uh, with that said, I'm going to close the conference at this point. Thank you.